Hi everybody, welcome to the Bible study. We continue in the life of Joseph and we're going to study Jacob blesses his sons in Genesis 49. We studied the previous one, Genesis 48, where um, Jacob blesses Joseph's sons, Manasseh Ephraim. And he puts the hands like a crisscross like that. And he, he's blessing first the younger one. And uh, let's uh, find out what's going to be with this. And jo Jacob is blessing his son. So he blessed his grandchildren first. The two children of Joseph born in Egypt. Because Joseph went apart from everybody else. He was told that uh, his father, Jacob, is sick. So he went and took his children with him to be blessed. So those two got blessed first. And he wanna make sure there's anything else he had to know in order to, with his funeral buried and all that, he will um, absolutely taking that in consideration. So now Jacob decided he's, he knows it's his time to go and he's blessing his sons. Wow. All right. So we are in chapter Genesis 49, verse 1. Then Jacob called his sons and said, gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in days to come. It's more like a prophecy, like prophesies over his children. He's telling what is going to be in the future. It's pretty much what uh, Jacob is telling them. So verse 2, assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father, Israel, which is Jacob. Because I said we, we get uh, all mixed up with the uh, country. Now, verse 3, Reuben. Reuben is, yeah, you are my firstborn. So he's the firstborn. So he starts with the firstborn always. And his right hand usually goes on the firstborn. My might, the first sign of my strength. Wow. Excelling in honor, excelling in power. Wow. So he acknowledged that he born to be mighty and he's been mighty and um, in strength and honor and excelling in power. Verse 4. So this part is good, but wait. Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. Because as the water like uh, gets blurred, when you move in, Jacob sees he's not going to excel. Why? For you went up onto your father's bed, which was Jacob's, uh, um, one of the wives. Definitely was not Rachel, but he had three wives, Leah, Rachel, and two more. So you... For you went up onto your father's bed, onto my couch, and defiled it. He slept with one of his uh, wives. So, because of that, you will not be mighty, excelling in honor, power. Nothing like that will happen anymore. Things will change because he sinned against his father, Jacob. Unfortunately, so this was the reality. And uh, the father knew, even though he was the firstborn and deserves the most, he doesn't get it because of his sins against his father. That's why it says, honor your father and your mother, and then, then you will have a long life. Um, he didn't cut his from, from his life, but he tells what is going to be because he did that. He will not excel as he used to do, no longer excel. Next, Simeon and Levi are brothers. They, their swords are weapons of violence. 
Let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly, for they have killed men in their anger. And hamstrung oxen as they pleased. So Simeon with Levi gets the same. I'm not sure they call it blessing, but it's pretty much a prophecy upon their future. Uh, they don't want to, you know, the father says he does want to enter their council and be around them because they killed men when they were angry. They, they killed men. So, and now he doesn't say, so seven, curse be their anger so fierce and their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. He doesn't say, I curse my children, Simeon and Levi. Levi. He say, cursed be their anger. Because in anger they did uh, things not supposed to do, kill men. You want to know how many they killed? It says killed men. Cursed be their anger so fierce and their fury so cruel. And then they'll be scattered. So it'll be scattered all over the place um, and disperse them in Israel. So they'll be scattered. They will not stay together. Which usually the family, you would like the family to stay together, not be scattered. But it's what they get. Wow. I'm not sure what kind of blessing is, but it's what the, when Jacob connect with God, God it tells him what happened and he knew. So all this uh, it comes over his children. Verse 8. Judah, your brothers will praise you. It was the one who was um, um, he helped Joseph. He spoke even to the, you know, he, he took the, he took an, an his, his uh, volunteer to speak to his, his brothers and to, to do, to deal with things where they were like, uh, found that they have like money in their sack and all that. I spoke to the father. He was the one that kind of is outspoken, I would say. Your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemy. And should be the firstborn should be doing that. But the firstborn did something wrong. Very, very wrong. And now the blessing fell on Judah. Because he was the one delegating things around and helping things around. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemy. Imagine like the hand will be on the neck of the enemy. So if you have your hand on the neck, the neck is a very sensitive part you can break their neck if your hand is on the enemy's neck you can break it and then i just said they get paralyzed they can die so that's a very strong word the hand your hand will be on the neck of your enemies i mean they god he gets all of them your father's sons will bow down to you mm. You are, a, which will be his brothers, will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to rouse him. Who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. A scepter and a ruler is um, to guide him, to help him. He's like a shepherd. He has that when he, you kill the wolf or whenever animal comes, a, a bear comes around your um, your sheep, the, the, a scepter and a ruler. Like, so guide guides you, um, helps you. Uh, you can kill animals with that as well. Not the, okay, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the lure stuff from between his feet, until he, to whom it belongs, shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. 
wow those are the really high blessings for judah he will teeter his donkey to a wine to a vine he's called to the choices branch he will wash his garments in wine his robes in the blood of grapes his eyes will be darker than wine his teeth whiter than milk i think in this part when it says that uh, he's called to the choices branch this on verse 11 and 12 i'll say verse 11 especially when it says that uh, he will wash his garments in wine this talking about further my generation is talking about pretty much more of jesus he robe in the blood of grapes so he tells like all the way far out because uh, we have um, in the same study we were saying that uh, David comes from the uh, Judah, the tribe of Judah, and Jesus. So, but in obe the obedience of the nation shall be yours, like he is, like Judah, and will be obedient. Everybody, like the nations, would be obedient to his. Uh, be, belong to him they will be obedient and that's very that, that's very powerful he will wash his garments he will teeth his donkey to a vine uh, remember that uh, he's called to his choices branch the vine and the branches is about jesus as well and he was coming on the donkey in the young donkey um when he came to jerusalem and uh, everybody say hosanna hosanna great is he who comes in the name of the lord and his eyes will be darker than wine he's still whiter than milk mm. so he's even on this portion um, jacob is talking about the future what is going to happen, how blessed is going to be, because from his um, lineage, lineage uh, is going to come uh, Messiah. Wow. All right, let's keep going. 13. Zebulon, Zebulun, will live by the seashore and become a haven for ships. His border will extend towards Sidon. It's um he's going to be more like uh dealing with fishing and all the seashore and becomes a haven for ships his border will extend towards it on he's uh, he's going to his area is going to be in that area like he's, he's going to say like seashore so he's going to uh, live in that area he's going to extend in that area Ishakar is a raw bond, bond donkey laying down among the sheep pens. When he sees how good is his resting place and how pleasant is his land, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to forced labor. Mm. That's not quite the things that people will... Um, will expect for the blessing so he will bend his shoulder to the burden wow and submit to forced labor verse 16 then will provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of israel then will be a snake by the roadside a viper along the path that bites the horse's heels so that is rider tumbles backward i look for your deliverance lord so then that way says like um is more like justice he is and describe him like a snake so when people would come with their horses think like they are like my much higher in rank uh he is um He's be as a snake biting the heels of the horses. 
and of course the the one who's riding the horse who's going to fail or if he has a carriage is going to um, be a, a big mess when the snake is uh, is around and it's will be like deliverance wow it's going to work in the pretty much deliverance like this but i say he will uh, provide justice for his people god will be attacked by a band of riders but he will attack them at their heels so it's going to be like this is going to be pretty much in the future what is going to be um whenever he's going to be attacked he will attack them back them at their heels which the heels are the lower part and if you can't if you are like attacked by your heels you fail you lose the equilibrium you cannot walk so it tells you what is going to be his um his his way of uh, life and descendants asher's food will be rich so be a spicy good rich food will be around the uh, asher he will provide delicatessy feed for a king wow he will eat in like have food in like in uh, abundance and will eat food that is very expensive i would say but it says delicatessy fit for a king like only a king will eat uh, those those kind of food so we'll be rich in that regard you will have food i was just talking um to somebody and you know what i found whenever you give more it's what you have so since i'm i'm um, feeding everybody who comes to my doors especially my kids uh, friends i always have plenty even in a time of need my fridge was always filled up and we are always like a, it will be like like i've been blessed the the things i give i receive much more and beyond measure back so i can see asher's food will be rich as i've been blessed by god uh, regard food verse 21 naphtali is a duo though set free that bears beautiful founts so it's like a it's more like a gentle and is a free like a like a deer that bears beautiful um, babies so it's it's a soft delicate person and that would have beautiful uh, descendants wow so it comes to joseph it goes in order verse 22 joseph is a fruitful wine a fruitful wine near a spring a fruit so okay so let's let's say a fruitful fruitful wine which is like i would say like a whole garden and of wine and it says near a spring which it gets always water to keep it now will not get dry whose branches climb over a wall like climbs all the way high up at a wall a, very, a wall is very strong but it climbs over no matter how fragile it is it climbs over a strong wall with bitterness archers attacked him they shot at him with hostility so even like people came in his life to attack him but his bow remained steady his strong arms stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of jacob because of the shepherd the rock of israel because of your father's god who helps you because of the almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above he says he remains strong he remains strong in everything because god blessed him he will not he did not shake in anything neither to go with the 
sleep with uh, Potiphar's wife. He didn't do those things. He always looked for interests of others, helping others. And that's why God liked at him, blessed him. And it says, with the blessing of the skies above, blessing of the deep springs below, like deep. If it's a deep spring, you always have water. Blessing of the breast and womb. Your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains. Of course, a father's blessings are greater. No matter who say what, you always have to take your parents' blessings. Um, let's go back. Your father, so in verse 26, your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounty of the age-old hills. Let all this rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Now he said it. He said it. He said that he is the prince among his brothers. When he was a young one, when he made the the, the coat of the coat of multiple colors, like just like a jacket, uh, he was um, he he knew he acknowledged who he was. He put him above everybody else, and everybody got jealous. And he says the dreams. He knew that he, those dreams signif what signifies. But he didn't want to, he kept into his heart. He knew something greater is going to be out of Joseph. Now he said it. Let all this rest on the head of Joseph, all those blessings. On the brow of the prince among his brothers. As he was, like he was, his, um, the grain was above everybody else. And that was his dream. So, anyway, all right, let's keep going. Benjamin is the younger one. Remember that Benjamin and Joseph came from Rachel. So there was first was Joseph and then Benjamin. So these two are the last ones. Um. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. In the evening, he divides the plunder. So he's blessing him that he is like a wolf, that he devours the prey. So he always have, um, he will always have, because he is uh, devoured the, the enemy, and then whenever they have, the enemy will not survive. And then he, in the evening, so in the morning when he gets up, he devours the prey in the evening, divides the plunder. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. It's what he had for every single one. I'm not sure if he exercised this before his children came there, like uh, Jacob, or sometimes it's given by God. As he opens his mouth, the words are coming in, and is what he says. It's like a by revelation before, or automatically the words came when he opened his mouth. But this is what they give to his children. Right, next. The death of Jacob, verse 29. Then he gave them these instructions. I'm about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Mapelah near Mamre in Canaan. So it gives specific instruction exactly where it is. Now it's like oh, everybody's around. So it tells exactly what, um, where, where are the his fathers which Abraham bought along with the field or as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite. Excuse me. There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebecca were buried. And there I buried Leah. The field. So he already buried his uh, wife Rachel, Leah. I'm not sure the other ones. They don't even mention. 
but I think these two were significant that when the Bible says, you know, but he had another two wives in the meantime. That's why he has so many children. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jephthah had finished giving instructions to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. And she died. Wow. Yes, to be continued. There is more. And I think the next one will be the last one. So what we take from this specific one, what Jacob did, he blessed his children. The first he blessed uh, his grandchildren, the two of them that were very, very to his heart, I would say. They were like deep to his heart because they were Joseph's children. And he's... Um, blessing them according to what they have done and who they were and he sees like actually it's more like a prophecy so when you bless your children you actually you're going to prophesy over them telling them maybe they're not doing well in school but you're going to bless them how you're going to say you are the head not the tail you're among the first in the classroom or maybe in the whole school. Uh, you'll be like Manasseh Ephraim. Like they're actually, they were rich. Manasseh Ephraim, they were rich, rich children. They born in a rich, I would say family because Joseph was extremely rich as he was second in command of Pharaoh. And maybe I may not be paid but he was he was rich they gave he gave him like as a um, house and now the the land of goshen for his family but he was rich what what he made for pharaoh he had he had a part of it so you can bless your children to be um, rich wealthy to do business to be in whatever area you know to be, I said, the head, not the tail, to, you, you can bless them, as you see, like this is an example, how Jacob blessed his children, the way like, this is going for generation, generation, into generation, and bless their children to their children, and so forth, and then just, you can tell them just one big blessing, you can keep putting on them, you can touch, as Jacob touch Manasseh Ephraim's head, for blessing them, you can do the same thing, touch their head and just say the blessing for them and whenever problems they have you know they're struggling just put a blessing put the opposite put a big 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 blessing on your children all right i hope this helps and uh, i enjoy this uh, bible study and i hope you enjoy it as much as i enjoy it till next time i say goodbye goodbye now